Now, if we want to expand the function as a series expansion involving Hermit polynomials, it's also useful to have the normalization integral or the scalar product of the Hermit polynomial with itself. Now, with our definition of scalar product, that actually turns out to be the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the Hermit polynomial squared, and then times our weighting function exponential minus x squared dx. This is a very fun integral to calculate and we'll use some very clever mathematical tricks. So what we're going to do is see how these tricks work. And for starters, let's look at the integrand here. So it's basically the product of two Hermit polynomials and an exponential. And the Hermit polynomials were defined using the generating function. So this gives us the idea of trying to look, for example, at the product of this weighting function exponential x squared, then times the product of the generating function, this one. But then let's also introduce a second copy of the generating function, but this time not using t, but using s. So this smells a little bit like this integrand here. So let's see if we play around with this expression over here. Can we somehow use it to calculate our normalization uh, integral? So what I suggest you do now is pause the video, write down explicitly what this is, it's basically one big exponential, and then also use the definition of the generating function to write that as a series expansion. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. We have exponential minus x squared. And then the definition of the generating function, we have exponential minus t squared plus 2tx. And then for the final factor, we have exponential minus s squared minus 2sx. So that's the left-hand side. Um, as a right-hand side, we can use the definition of the generating function. So this stays the same, but then here, the generating function can also be written as a sum and going from zero to infinity of the Hermit polynomial of order n divided by n factorial and then t to the power of n. So we expand the generating function as a Laurent series and by definition the coefficients have everything to do with the Hermit polynomials. And then we have a second uh, summation but since we're taking the product of two summations we should be very careful to use a different symbol here to really stress the fact that these two are independent from each other. So then here we have hm of x divided by m factorial, and then we also use an s rather than a t. Okay, so yeah, we can simplify this thing on the right hand side a little bit by turning it into a double sum here, so a double sum to independent summation indices m and n going from zero to infinity. So we take the product of every term here with every term there, and then each term is basically exponential minus x squared. Then we have the product of two Hermit polynomials of order n and m, and then we divide the whole thing by n factorial and m factorial, and then we have t to the power of n and s to the power of m. Okay, what's the next step? Well, um, the next step is to take the integral of all of these expressions from minus infinity to plus infinity, because then we will be in a position to use the orthogonality relationship that we've derived earlier. So pause the video and see if you can indeed make use of the orthogonality relationship to simplify your life. Remember, the orthogonality relationship is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of exponential minus x squared h m x h n x dx. And that's precisely the stuff that we're finding here. Now this thing is equal to zero, provided n and m are different numbers. 
So if we take all of this expression here and we integrate this from minus infinity to plus infinity, if we take a look at the right hand side in this double sum here, the only terms that we will have left are the terms where n and m are the same. So the double sum will reduce to a single sum. So this means that we now have an integral, which, and then first take a look at the left hand side, uh, which is just, well, let's copy this again exponential minus x squared, exponential minus t squared plus 2tx exponential minus s squared min uh, um, plus 2sx dx. So that's the, the left hand side. And then for the right hand side, rather than having a double sum, we have a single sum, a sum and going from zero to infinity. And then we have um, the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, exponential minus x squared, h and squared x dx. And then we divide by n factorial squared and then also we have ts uh, to the power n okay and perhaps i should put this in between brackets to clean this thing up a little bit and now it's starting to get interesting because what we're seeing here is the integral that we want to calculate it's still embedded in a sort of a series expansion so that's slightly unfortunate but what we can do a strategy to follow is to first of all calculate this integral and then also try to write that as a series expansion and if we do that and if we identify like powers of t times s then hopefully that will put us in a position to be able to calculate the normalization integral so that's what we're going to do now um, a very useful auxiliary result that you can also find in another video is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of exponential minus x squared dx so that's the area under a gaussian basically and uh, that turns out to be the square root of uh, pi so next step is trying to make use of this result when we calculate that scary looking exponential there and a hint I can give you is to try and rewrite that integrand such that exponential minus x minus s minus t squared pops up. So pause the video, try and rewrite that integral so that you can make use of these particular results here. So this uh, exponential minus x minus s minus t squared that's actually going to be exponential minus x squared minus s squared minus t squared and then we have plus 2xs plus 2xt minus 2st okay so that's what we have here that looks very similar to what we have here, but let's just compare. So we have um, all of these guys present. So these are those. And then we have the double products, which are over here. The only difference is in the last term here, this exponential has an extra factor exponential minus 2ts. So if we then take another look at the left-hand side, we can write this as an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponential minus x minus s minus t squared but if we write it like this then we have this expansion which has one factor too many which is the last factor this factor does not appear in our integrand so we need to get rid of that final factor and the way we're doing that is by multiplying this by exponential 2st so now it's okay if we expand this we get exactly what we started from over here so that's uh, that's fine dx okay um exponential 2st there's no x inside so this is just a prefactor that doesn't really matter so we can bring that out of the integral exponential 2st 
And then what we're left with is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of something that looks a lot like this integral over here. The only difference is that rather than having x, we have x minus s minus t. But if you do the change of variables, that doesn't really matter. It's just uh, a shift of your zero point, basically. And if you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, that doesn't really affect it uh, at all. So the end result here is just the same square roots of pi. OK, well, let's take stock of where we are at the moment. We have calculated that the left hand side here is equal to this very simple expression. And the right hand side is a series expansion of powers of ts, where the expansion coefficients are the stuff that we're interested in. So now, next step, pause the video and try to write this thing as series expansion of powers of s and t, and then identify like powers and then take the final step to evaluate the normalization integral. So our integral here is the square root of pi, and then we have the exponential. Now an exponential, we can write that as a series expansion n going from zero to infinity. The argument of the exponential, 2st to the power of n divided by n factorial. So this is the uh, left-hand side. So now we can identify like powers of st in, in this case. So if we look at this thing and if we look at that thing. So let's take a look at the, the left-hand side. So for the left-hand side, the power of st to the power of n, we have the square root of pi, 2 to the power of n divided by n factorial. And then if we revisit what we had here for ts to the power of n, we have this integral divided by n factorial squared. So that's the integral minus infinity to plus infinity, exponential minus x squared, h n squared x dx, but divided by n factorial squared. So finally, it's a very small step to figure out that the normalization integral, exponential minus x squared h n squared x dx, is equal to n factorial 2 to the power of n square root of pi. So that was a very clever uh, derivation based on series expansions and generating functions to figure out the value of this normalization integral. So pretty cool, I'd say.